not ask which creature screams in the night. Do not question who waits for you in the shadow. It is my cry that wakes you in the night, and my body that crouches in the shadow. I am Zinj, and you are the puppet that dances to my tune. From the Book of Zinj. Zinj, also known as the Changer of Ways, the Lord of Change, Lord of Sorcery, the Lord of Entropy, the Great Conspirator, the Weaver of Destinies, and the Architect of Fate. Among many other names and titles is the god of change, evolution, mutation, intrigue, ambition, knowledge, sorcery, destiny, lies, and trickery. Zinj is especially empowered by the desire for change and ambition for advancement among mortals. Its true power is sorcery. And as all sorcery flows from the fawn of the Immaterium, so too is Zinj the master of that twisted, chaotic medium of psychic energy. Zinj embodies mortals' tendency towards mutability and change, the drive to evolve and manipulate. This spirit is present in the essence of every living creature, from the first division of cells in the womb, to the ultimate craving for survival. It is in the hearts of those with the strongest desire to prevail that Zinj whispers its insidious promise, offering a means of life eternal to those unwilling to accept death and oblivion as inevitable. It is also Zeej that weaves the threads that connect every action, plot, and subtle intrigue in a galaxy-wide game of manipulation and subterfuge. At the end of each of these threads lies the ensnared soul of a human puppet, those of Zinja's mortal servants and agents who believe they serve the Lord of Sorcery in mutually beneficial pacts. The truth is that Zinja's every action is planned with its ultimate goal as its own establishment as the preeminent chaos power in the realm of chaos the ultimate victor in the great game. Of course, the very nature of the Lord of Entropy is such that were it to attain this triumph, it would still strive for turmoil and change. In many ways, Zinj is both the best and least understood of the Dark Gods. It is the God of Fate plots and schemes, as well as the god that exemplifies the ever-changing nature of the warp. However, Zinj does not plot towards some end, at least none that can be comprehended. It schemes simply to scheme. It is constantly building, even as its devices unravel under their own complexity. At the same time, it is the god of knowledge and comprehension, and its devotees may be those who seek a deeper understanding of an often enigmatic universe. Zinj is known by a hundred thousand titles across the galaxy, amongst them the Weaver of Destiny, the Great Conspirator, and the Architect of Fate. In its mind, it listens to the hopes and desires for change of every sentient being from every planet in the universe. It watches over the plans of its playthings as they unfold into history, toying with fate and fortune, both for its own entertainment and to further its unfathomable schemes.
It feeds upon and is empowered by the mortal emotions of need and desire for change that are an essential part of all life in the universe. All people dream of prosperity, freedom from injustice, and a better tomorrow. These dreams are not just the preserve of the impoverished or the powerless. Even Imperial planetary governors and Imperial Navy battle fleet admirals dream of further riches, or perhaps even an end to their responsibilities to the Emperor. All these dreams and desires create a powerful impetus for change, and the ambitions of nations create a force that can challenge history. Zinj is the embodiment of that force within the Immaterium. It was the second of the Chaos Gods to come to full sentience within the Warp, Sometime during Old Earth's European medieval period in the second millennium, its birth marked the maturation of human nations and politics with all their implicit intrigues and double dealings. Zinch is not content to merely observe the fulfillment and disappointment brought by the passage of time. It has its own plans schemes that are so complex and closely woven that they touch the lives of every living thing, whether they realize it or not. The Chaos God's masterly comprehension of time, history and intrigue allows its ploys to intertwine seamlessly, forming a web of casualty that spans the stars. Zinch is aware of the visions and plans of all mortals in the galaxy. It takes great delight in the plotting and politicking of others and favors the cunning over the strong. When the inner voice in a person's head speaks, when the desperate whisper their prayers into the night, it is the architect of fate that listens. It perceives every event and intention, and from this information, its mighty mind can work out how each will influence the future. The intertwining lattice work of probability, hope, and change is Zinch's meat and drink. Without it, it would eventually fade away. Perhaps the Architect of Fate has plans to overthrow the other Chaos Gods, or to extend its dominion over all the mortal realms. Perhaps not even Zinj itself can say for sure. Whatever its ultimate goal, it seeks to achieve it by manipulating the individual lives of human and Xenos alike. By offering the power of knowledge and sorcery, it can recruit influential Chaos Warlords and Magi to its cause, affecting the lives of many more at a single stroke. However, few of its plans are ever simple. Some span eons with their complexity, whilst many appear contradictory to others, or even against its own interests. Only Zinj can see the threads of potential futures weaving through time like tangled skeins of multi-colored cords, cords which themselves are made of decision, happenstance, and fluke. The Lord of Change is the undisputed master of sorcery in the universe. Sorcery is one of the most potent agents of change, and those who use it are amongst the most ambitious and hungry for power. 
The raw psychic energy that empowers the psychers of the mortal realm is the actual fabric of the realm of chaos. The same fabric that makes up the ruiners' powers, their demon servants, and the shadow selves of mortal consciousness that flicker in the warp and that humanity calls souls. The use of psychic power, or magic as it can rightly be called, is held as the ultimate expression of faith among Zinj's followers, who have much to gain from its patronage. Though it would likely cost them their mortal souls, they would at least have boundless power to show for it while they live. This is in stark contrast to the poor wretched psychers of the Imperium of Man, who are corralled by the Inquisition's black ships and brought to Terra where many of them feed the dying Emperor's boundless hunger for psychic energy to power the Astronomicon. In Zinja's eyes, mortal creatures are immeasurably steeped in ambiguity. Yet they somehow wage their personal wars, completely unaware of the countless contradictions in their souls. Zinj cannot help but dabble in the mortal realm. Some amongst the Inquisition believe that the Great Conspirator is responsible for the exponential increases of psychic ability in the human species in recent millennia. Its own need to manipulate and control, and its desire to increase its own power in the warp, Zinj is eternally playing the great game waged amongst its brother Chaos Gods. The Architect of Fate is not above sullying its own claws with the bloody business of war. Though it much prefers to win its battles through guile and sorcery rather than brute force. Consumed by its own ineffable thoughts, it binds the galaxy in the weave of its complex schemes just as a spider binds a fly. Though its schemes can take Tehran millennia to unfold, when they do come to fruition, it is usually reality itself that pays the price. While one mortal lies to another, while envy and ambition survive among humans and aliens, Zinj will work its magic as the puppet master of the universe, working towards the day when its final great work will be revealed. It exerts its influence in the mortal realm through subtle manipulation and devious ploys. The victims of its corruption are sorcerers drawn by the promise of forbidden knowledge, scholars who seek knowledge at all costs, politicians lured by the power knowledge provides to outmaneuver their opponents. Zincha's sacred number is nine. Its colors are typically seen as blue and gold, but an ever-changing rainbow of color is appropriate as well, thus giving the name of the Lord of Change's demonic armies, the Scintillating Legions. If Chaos is Change itself, then Zeech, more than any other dark power, embodies chaos in its purest, most primal form. Therefore, no other god of chaos warrants more of our fearful respect, our tireless resistance, and our unflagging loyalty to the Emperor. From Inquisitor Gallianus Dirk at the Jellico Conclave, now declared Heretica Extremis. The psychic entity, or sentient force in the Immaterium known as Zeej, is perhaps the most enigmatic of the so-called Chaos Gods, or Ruiner's powers. Zeej, the changer of ways, 
embodies mortals' desires for evolution, improvement, innovation, and progress, as well as their dreams of wealth, prosperity, and a better tomorrow. While many perceive these motivations as healthy, wholesome, and perhaps even necessary to mortal existence, Zinch, the great conspirator, works to corrupt the aspirations and ambitions of humanity and Xenos alike, and to leverage these hopes and dreams for its own nefarious ends. The other dark gods tend to act upon mortal society more directly. Corn with bloodshed and slaughter, Nurgle with disease and decay, and Slanesh with the allure of ecstasy and decadence. However, Zeech and its servants, human, Xenos, and demon, scheme and conspire quietly and stealthily to guide and influence the machinations of mortal society. The changer of ways favors subtle weapons, flattering words, enticing temptations, healthy ambitions stoked to traitorous or immoral ends, and above all, schemes within endless schemes. Many a politician, scholar, military officer, or other mortal leader has begun a promising career, altruistic project, or worthwhile intellectual investigation only to find themselves, perhaps prompted by a seemingly well-intentioned colleague who secretly served the great conspirator, making moral compromises, moving up the hierarchy at the expense of others, or taking ethically questionable shortcuts. Even with the best of intentions, or perhaps because of them, these people are vulnerable to the machinations of Zeech, which conspires to turn such individuals into cogs in its infernal machine, fueled by endless schemes, lies, plots, and deceits. And now, onto its manifestation. While the other dark gods adopt relatively fixed forms, much of the time, Zeech manifests in a multitude of guises. It is often referred to as a he, with the masculine gender, though in fact, like all the entities composed of psychic energy called the Chaos Gods, it has no gender. The firmament surrounding Zeej is heavy with magic. It weaves like liquid smoke about its head, forming subtle and interwoven patterns. Forms of places and people appear in the smoke as Zinj contemplates their fate. Those who appear there will inevitably find their minds, bodies, or destinies mutating into strange new forms, for none can come to Zinj's attention and remain unchanged. Nonetheless, over the eons, certain traits have emerged in its appearance, its associated iconography, the material presence of the gods' demonic followers, and the nightmares its visage implants into the minds of those who witness it. Such descriptions often reveal it as a thin, lanky sorcerer either male or female, in robes that continually change color. Its head hangs low beneath its shoulders, so that head and body are one, and its arms are long and spindly. From above its burning eyes spring two sweeping horns, the spiraling extremities of which crackle with arcane fire. 
Some description posit that Zinch's demonic skin is covered in faces and mouths that shift, slide, emerge, and are subsumed back into the unnatural flesh, crawling with constant change. They whisper secrets dark and terrible, leering at and mocking onlookers. As the Changer of Ways speaks, these faces repeat its words with subtle but important differences or provide a commentary that throws doubt upon the statements uttered by the entity's primary or natural mouth. Some of the Ordo Maleus's demon hunters, however, realize that these perceived consistencies, like so many things associated with the Great Deceiver, may constitute a ruse of one kind or another. After all, consistency is often part and parcel of the most convincing lies and confidence schemes. Although many have described Zinch in this way, others have portrayed the Dark God as multi-colored smoke, crackling energy of an unknown type that burns or mutates the objects it touches, faces in mist, a writhing mass of fleshy protoplasm, and burning, dark tongue runes that hang in space and sear the very air sometimes all within the same observation. Others show malformed birds, fish, or perverse hybridized versions of the two that swim through the air and fly through the sea. Indeed, birds and fish figure heavily in descriptions of Zinj, in the gods' iconography, and in the shapes taken by many of its demonic and mutated mortal followers. For instance, Zinch's most powerful servants, the greater demons known as the Lords of Change, resemble giant humanoid birds. Its screamers and the discs that carry Zinch's champions to battle often appear as flying aquatic manta rays, tirelessly hunting through both the great ocean of the Empyrean and the air of real space like the legendary Carcharodons of primordial terror. Other commentators have suggested that Zinj, the great mutator, has no fixed shape at all. Its tangible form, when it chooses to manifest physically, is a mass of constantly shifting flesh. Thus, the constantly fluctuating material body of the Changer of Ways resembles many of its creations, such as the gods, demons, and its domain in the realm of chaos itself, which similarly has no stable form. Still others have posited that its physical forms are simply images that mortal minds create to try to perceive and understand something far more abstract, an agent of pure change, mutation and flux. Such a form is more akin to metaphor than reality, and perhaps suits this ruiner's power to a greater degree than eyes of flesh or metal could possibly capture. If some truth lies in this line of reasoning, then perhaps mortal minds have come to associate Zinch with birds and fish creatures of air and water respectively, because both of these animals inhabit fluid environments. Wind, tide, waves, temperature, turbidity, and bodies in motion constantly reshape the air and water in which these organisms live, making them fitting symbols for the changer of ways. As with much concerning the Great Changer, however, in the end all is conjecture and supposition, for attempting to know the true form of the Master of Mutation is to embrace madness.
as any description of Zinj will be inaccurate and prone to the manipulations of the Great Deceiver, it follows that the most accurate descriptions of it will acknowledge their inherent imprecision. Any attempt to fix this dark god in words, images, or ideas, no matter for what purpose, scholarly, tactical, self-serving, or unholy, will fail. Even if mortal minds could possibly perceive, comprehend, and communicate the true nature of Zinj at one moment, that nature would change the next, rendering the previous understanding obsolete. As such, whether one's goal is to remain loyal to the Emperor of Mankind, to serve the purpose of a Xenos species, or to explore the ways of chaos for reasons scholarly or dark, one may best be served by considering the architect of fate only at the periphery of one's mind's eye. For even those who acknowledgedly sail upon the shifting breeze of Zinj can never see the true face of the Chaos God who wears a thousand masks. I am Zinj, and you are the puppet that dances to my tune. Zinj is one of the four major Chaos Gods, and its areas of influence include sorcery, scheming, change, ambition, and knowledge. It is known by many names, the Changer of Ways, the Great Schemer, the Father of Lies and Deception, the Great Mutator, the Master of Fortune, the Great Conspirator, the Architect of Fate, the Great Eagle, the Shifting Breeze, the Master of Fade, Cha, Chunch, Chen, and countless other titles and names from the millions of dialects and languages spoken throughout the galaxy. For every name by which the Master of Deceit is known, it has a thousand geysers and plots. Everything related to the Master of Change shifts, mutates, evolves, and transmogrifies. One can go mad, and many have, trying to study even the smallest threads of the Great Schema and to perform the impossible to describe it and to fix it to one shape, one form, one motive, one truth. Perhaps the best way to characterize Zinj is not to describe it at all, as over time it differs from itself more than it does any other being. Zinj, like its endless schemes, constantly shifts, morphs, and transforms. It is without question the most disturbing and least comprehensible of all the Chaos Gods to mortals. Plotters and schemers find themselves drawn to it, especially those who crave psychic or sorcerer's power to achieve their goals. Politicians and leaders, magisters and chaos cultists, all find themselves drawn along the convoluted paths of fate, using Zinj to achieve their dreams and aspirations, though ultimately all are led to play their part in Zinch's own eternal schemes. No mortal can fully comprehend the full nature of the intricately woven, multi-layered plots of the Changer of Ways, and to attempt to do so can only lead to insanity. And yet, in reality, Zinch has no grand plan, no ultimate goal to fulfill. For Zinj, 
The mere act of plotting and entwining the brief fates of mortals is purpose enough. There is no end to its scheming, for it desires no end to the creation of change. It can never achieve any ultimate aim, for to do so would be the end of ambition, the end of change, and thus the end of the Lord of Destiny. Many are the followers of Zeech. Some willingly and knowingly follow the architect of fate, others Deceived by the father of lies and its servants, believe themselves to be advancing their own agendas, while in actuality they blindly serve the changer of ways. Many rogues, renegades, heretics and chaos space marines also serve Zinch. The reach of the architect is long. Stretching across the galaxy with special attention to regions such as the Eye of Terror, the Maelstrom, the Great Rift, and the Screaming Vortex, where the warp and reality become one. It is the master of the thousand and one plots, each more intricate and devious than the next and none save for Zinch itself can possibly imagine, let alone fathom, them all. Such is the changer of ways, and such is its control over the foolish efforts of all mortals. While not as numerous or as obvious as the followers of Kor, Zinch, nevertheless, has a strong and firm hold on the hands and minds of mortals. In fact, many more mortals serve it than are aware of it, its scheming and many names often obscuring the true force behind events. Mortal worshippers of Zinch tend to be sorcerers, psychers, scholars, and other educated elites who desire greater knowledge and power. Some of these worshippers become very powerful sorcerers, but Zinch has a tendency to mutate its followers, and the highest levels of power are said to be difficult for its mortal followers to reach, as they frequently find themselves mutated into the mindless beasts called Chaos Spawn before they can unlock the most potent mysteries offered by the Lord of Change. Those who do attain great power in the service of the Changer of Ways, however, are extremely powerful foes, mighty Chaos Sorcerers, as well as great warriors. Additionally, while Korn detests and forbids sorcery, intrigue, and subtlety in all its forms, Zinch has no such qualms about using and manipulating brutish might when it strikes its fancy. As such, while Korn has no sorcerer or psycho followers, Zinj assembles armies of warriors from all walks of life. Anyone who inflicts or incurs great change in themselves or their surroundings is likely to fall under the gaze of the Lord of Change. Now, those who study arcane law, employ psychic powers, practice the art of sorcery, or otherwise tamper with the power of the Empyrean, with or without Imperial sanction, are among Zinja's favorite targets for temptation and eventual corruption. Imperial scholars have determined that the incidence of the psycho mutation among the human population increases with each generation. It therefore follows that the risk Zinj poses to humanity 
has increased commensurately. As such, organizations such as the Inquisition, the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, the Adeptus Astronomica, and the Scholastia Psicana must remain forever vigilant and prosecute any trace of the influence of chaos with extreme prejudice. Many checks and restraints exist to prevent the influence of warp entities on the minds of Imperial psychers. But any security system and the individuals who maintain it are fallible, capable of errors in judgment, and themselves subject to temptations and dark influences. Even with these safeguards in place, Imperial Commissars operate under strict orders to execute sanctioned psychers at the first sign of possession or demonic influence. Zinchian Corruption Zinch is the changer of ways, the chaos god of change, sorcery and intrigue, which perhaps most directly embodies the heart of what chaos itself represents as a universal force. Fewer individuals and in chaos cults fall to the temptations offered by Zinch than to the other Runa's powers, as the immediate benefits the Lord of Sorcery offers are less tangible and immediate than the sensory pleasure of Slanesh, the disease and disfigured immortality of Nurgle, or the bloodthirsty strength of Khorne. Instead, the worship of Zinch appeals most to those who value knowledge, especially secret, forbidden knowledge, and the power that it brings. Of course, the individuals most likely to be tempted into the service of Zinch are psychers who already possess the secret and feared ability to tap the limitless power of the warp to reshape reality. Zinj offers them the knowledge required to achieve unlimited heights of psychic ability through the practice of the powerful, arcane psychic techniques known to the Imperium of Man as sorcery that can only be learned from interaction and communication with the dark powers of the Immaterium. For many, the forbidden knowledge Zinj offers is just too tempting to pass up, and before they know it, they have been ensnared within the grand schemas, tangled webs, and find themselves as just another unwitting pawn in its chaos plots. No less a personage than the Primarch, Magnus the Red found it impossible to steer clear of Zinch's temptations, as his overwhelming desire to protect his thousand sons legions, precious knowledge of the warp and sorcery, ultimately led him into the embrace of the changer of ways. Even non psychers can find themselves pawns in the Changer of Ways as endless games of intrigue when they discover that if they make use of the heretical knowledge offered by the Chaos God just this once, they can perhaps better their station in life or that of their loved ones. Imperial nobles and politicians are often drawn into its web through the edge over their rivals it offers in the form of knowledge and the power it can provide. And yet, the lower classes also provide fertile ground for the Lord of Sorcery. In a society that is as difficult and repressive as that of the Imperium, 
It can be all too easy to give in to the blandishments of a charismatic heretical preacher who promises salvation and prosperity if one will just agree to follow a particular path towards enlightenment. It is in just this way that countless Zinchian chaos cults are begun across the galaxy. Many normally pious and good-hearted subjects of the Emperor, tired of the mindless, back-breaking labor and elite disdain that dominates life on so many Imperial worlds, are easily swayed to join various mystery cults. These cults slowly draw these folk ever tighter into a web of Zinchian corruption until, too late, they discover they have become the corrupt servants of chaos. While its corruption is the least common form of chaos perversion found across the Imperium, it is also the most feared by the Inquisition, for its adherents are the most powerful of Chaos servants and the best at concealing both themselves and their complex schemes from the light of the Emperor. Rivalry Typically, the Changer of Ways stands in direct opposition to Nurgle, the Plague Lord, just as Khorne, the God of War and Wrath, most fervently opposes Slanesh, the Prince of Decadence and Pravity. Where Nurgle represents Chaos as a force of stagnation and dissolution, Zinch embodies Chaos as a force for change and development. Where Nurgle promotes and feeds off of despair and decay, Zinj promotes and is empowered by hope, potential, and progress. Where Nurgle fosters deterioration and ruin, Zinj fosters germination and development. To many students of the Runer's powers, the However, speculative ideological descriptions of the Changer of Ways make better sense when juxtaposed against those of Nurgle. Zinch's seeming antithesis amongst the Dark Gods. On innumerable occasions, its intricate plots have been foiled by Nurgle's malign influence and the two gods as demonic and mortal servants clash as often with each other as with their mutual enemies in the Imperium and among the Xenos species. Despite Zinch's intense rivalry with Grandfather Nurgle, it is nonetheless the Chaos God with the most influence over the other major Runa's powers. At times, the Chaos Gods must unite and act in concert if their individual plans are to reach fruition, as they did against the Emperor at the time of the Horus Heresy, and it is always Zinch that brokers these rare reliances of Chaos Undivided. However, Zinch never acts out of altruism, and it can be guaranteed that every time it moves to unite the powers of Chaos, it does so ultimately with its own unfathomable goals in mind. The Realm of the Sorcerer Created from the raw energy of the warp, Zinch's realm is one of constant flux and shifting structures hewn spontaneously from every material imaginable. There, the only constant is change. No mortal and few demons can visit the realm of the Raven God and survive with sanity intact. From Inquisitor Gillian Keese 
of the Ordo Maleus. Just as Zeech manifests and appears in many different guises, many of them fluid and shifting, so too the domain of the changer of ways within the realm of chaos, the realm of the sorcerer, constantly adapts to its master's whims, desires, moods and of course, the demands of its thousand and one plots. Observers, human Xenos and demon, perceive and interpret this territory in a wide variety of ways. In fact, some scholars and a few of the more coherent first-hand witnesses who have survived contact with Zinch's realm have suggested that neither mortal nor demon, save perhaps the most powerful lords of change, can grasp the true nature of Zinja's shifting realm. Most who visit the domain of the Great Mutator quickly go mad. Those of exceptionally strong mind and strong will can perhaps interpret but one facet of the often crystalline landscape that, like Zinja itself, has an infinite number of faces. Many commentators suggest that the mortal mind can only perceive this world of warp energy wrought into something resembling solid form through symbols or metaphors, images created by the mind of the iron willed in an attempt to make sense of pure chaos and constant change. In fact, many commentators rely on paradoxical metaphors even to describe the process of perceiving Zinch's realm itself, sculpting with fog, describing a dream as it occurs, singing silently, painting with mist and the like. The great ocean of the warp is a sea of madness and insanity, and Zinch's realm is the concentrated essence of such things given form. In spite of the constantly changing nature of the domain of the architect of fate, and the limited capacity of the mortal mind to perceive and comprehend it, certain common views have emerged from the extant descriptions of its realm. Some observers claim that an enormous crystalline labyrinth dominates the landscape, a luminescent plane shimmering like a polished, mottled opal. Passages in this maze appear, dissolve, merge, split, and change direction seemingly at random. Only the Lords of Change, Zeech's greater demons, and those with the trenchant insights of the irrevocably mad can hope to understand the design of Zinja's deranged maze and to navigate its corridors. No demons are needed to act as sentinels in its realm. The labyrinth itself provides sufficient protection against anyone rash and foolhardy enough to attempt an assault on the Great Schema. Those who gaze into the crystalline substance that composes this maze may see more than light reflected and refracted in the fluctuating facets of the shining surfaces. They may catch glimpses of fears, miseries, and hopes made visually manifest, dreams and nightmares, histories real and imagined, potential futures, images of torment, ecstasy and despair, and abstract thoughts made momentarily concrete as pictures in the crystals. One visionary reported seeing various images of his children at different points in their lives, all of them moments of despair, sorrow and desperation. 
Another recounted her experiences in Zinch's realm as one of exaltation and ecstasy, as she witnessed reflected representations of what she took to be her possible futures, each more joyful and successful than the last. And yet another came to observe nightmare imagery in the mirrored surface of the labyrinth, demons rending flesh from friends and loved ones, the destruction of his home by dark sorcerers wielding warp fire, and worst of all, the transformation of his own body into a tentacled, writhing mass. When this last traveler was finally able to tear his gaze away from the hellish visions, he discovered that so large days had passed and that his body had indeed changed into the hideous chaos spawn he had seen in his vision. Imperial records show that all three of these individuals met with tragic ends. Suicide, insanity, and execution at the hands of the Inquisition, respectively. In one sense, these survivors of Zinch's realm were fortunate, as it is rumored that most who travel through the maze of the Raven God wander it eternally as miserable, insane shells of their former selves forever tormented by ghastly visions, regrets over their mistakes and missed opportunities, and the hopes for a tomorrow that they will never realize. While the passage of time in the warp fluctuates and does not correspond to its regular, linear flow in the normal, four-dimensional space-time of the Materium, the inconsistency of time's progression is even more pronounced in Zinch's realm. The accounts of the survivors suggest in what seems like a few solar minutes spent gazing to the depths of the crystals of Zinch's labyrinthine realm, solar days or even standard years can pass. Two individuals might enter Zinch's realm in the same instant in time. One might exit moments later and report that years had passed, whereas the other could spend centuries of real time in Zinch's realm but swear that he had been gone only minutes. In addition, other peculiarities in individuals' subjective perceptions of time occur within its realm. A single footstep may seem to take solar hours to complete. What seems like a few seconds spent admiring the beautiful refraction of light on the crystalline structure of the maze can take Tehran days. Many visitors, momentarily transfixed by some curiosity in its realm, have died of dehydration or starvation. Others can spend years wandering the insane corridors of its maze without drinking, eating, or resting, their metabolism apparently slowed by chaos influences. Legends tell of an entity known as the Guardian of the Maze that inhabits the crystalline labyrinth. Though its name implies that it serves as the protector of Zinch's realm, it is said to function more as a gatekeeper and observer. Rumors tell of a path through Zinch's realm that, in theory, anyone, mortal or demon, may follow to discover infinite knowledge. To follow this path, the inquisitive pilgrim must travel through nine gates. These portals, three times the height of a man, appear as golden arches wreathed in the blue and pink warp fire of Zinch. Such is the power of the Guardian of the Maze 
Or perhaps it is the bizarre temporal nature of Zinja's twisting realm itself. The Guardian manifests as a giant disembodied mouth hovering above all nine gates simultaneously. At each gate, the mouth ponderously speaks, asking those seekers of knowledge one of the 999 riddles of Zarachoth. Those who answer the riddles correctly may pass through the gates and continue along the path to ultimate enlightenment. Those who fail to answer correctly are doomed to wander the labyrinth for all eternity, racked with insanity and regret over the infinite knowledge that might have been theirs. Legend tells of one being, the only one in all of history who answered all nine of the questions correctly. Strangely, many versions of the story posit that this individual appeared in the guise of a young girl who was accompanied by a small black dog. Factions within the Ordo Maleus wage vicious scholarly battles over the hidden significance of this tale, or if the tale actually happened, or was yet another metaphorical wisp of smoke from the Master of Lies. The Impossible Fortress Zinger's Sanctum Sanctorum, the Impossible Fortress, is said to lie at the center of the crystalline maze. <laughs> if indeed geographical descriptors such as center apply with any accuracy to this inconstant realm, some consider this as more akin to a central belief or conceit that might drive a series of thoughts than an actual location, as nothing of this area has physicality as mortals would comprehend it. While this etheric edifice is in constant flux, many have described it as a crystalline castle composed of the same sort of material as the labyrinth that surrounds it. Imbalanced spires spontaneously emerge from the ever-shifting foundations of the impossible fortress, as do towers of blue and pink flame and searing warp fire. Gates, doors and portals slowly open, as if yawning with the ennui of ages, only to slam shut like a mouse of terrible beasts, then disappear. Mortals shackled by the psychological manacles forged by a lifetime of habit and enculturation in the material realm cannot fathom the perverse design of Zinger's home. Indeed, as the name of this fastness implies, even the most visionary and heretical designers of the material realm could not draft plans for the maddening architecture of the impossible fortress. Few demons, save the most powerful lords of change, can navigate its corridors. But as these creations are intelligent distillations of the madness that makes up Zinja's realm, they thrive all the same. Deep inside this fortress, according to some profane accounts, lies Zinja's fabled hidden library. This infinite collection of tomes, scrolls, and parchments of every kind contains every scrap of knowledge and thought ever recorded in creation. Stories written and unwritten, histories true and alternate, and accounts of futures potential, actual, and imagined. Many of the volumes are so weighty with knowledge they gain ascensions of a kind and spend centuries chattering to passers-by, 
arguing with one another, rewriting themselves, and then reorganizing their placement accordingly. Magical chains of warp flame help to protect the books and bind them in place. Horrors serve as grotesque librarians and work tirelessly to reshelve the works, catalogue the collection, and maintain what passes for order in the impossible fortress. Though, as the concept itself is anathema to the great mutator, no mortal could possibly fathom such a design. As with so many things associated with the Changer of Ways, few are always as they seem. Although the Crystal Labyrinth, the Impossible Fortress, and the Hidden Library often appear, or at least are often perceived, as I mentioned before, by no means are these descriptions consistent with every narrative provided by those unfortunate mortal souls who have visited Zinch's domain. Bok Samael, dubbed the Lunatic Scrivener of Hamklov Prime by the Hive City Princes who acted as his patrons, claimed to have traveled to and returned from Zincha's realm in the early 41st millennium. Samael attested that he saw nothing but a bleak hill on which a single, leafless tree stood. Delas Dial, the heretic illuminator of Fallon 10 who was later executed for heresy, described Zinch's realm as a barren, desert landscape populated by deformed, headless humanoids that continually split and reformed into new bodies. Other witnesses have described a realm of pulsating and constantly morphing protoplasm, towers of fungus and mold, continents of sentient vegetation and vines without finite length, and vast landscapes of nothing but barren stone and ash. It is likely that Zinch's realm is all of these things, and many more. Others have suggested that observers interpret Zincha's realm subjectively, filtering their perception of structured warp energy through their own psychological expectations and experiences. It may be most probable that Zinch itself determines how each mortal or demonic individual perceives its realm to suit the needs, whims, and conspiracies of the Master of Lies.